All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk about, at a, at a high level, how is a Turing machine going to compute this infinite majority language? This is the language where there are strictly more ones than there are zeros. So to begin with, we have our semi-infinite tape, and the Turing machine is going to start out with some special character to indicate the beginning of the tape, so that's what, what this triangle symbol means. And then the input to the machine is going to be sort of preloaded onto the tape. So here our input is 01101, so you can see that sequence is preloaded onto the tape before we even start running the machine. And then after that input, for, the, for all the other infinity cells in our semi-infinite tape, we're going to have these blank symbols over and over and over again. The idea that we're going to use in order to compute this majority language is we're going to say for every zero we see on the tape, we're going to cross off a one. And if uh, after we're done crossing off all the zeros, we have leftover ones, then that means that we should return one. That means there are more ones than zeros. So we're going to match up zeros and ones and then check to see if there are some ones left over at the very end. To get an idea for exactly what our Turing machine is going to look like, we can sort of describe this procedure of find a zero, cross it off, find a one, cross it off, repeat, from sort of the perspective of a Turing machine. So here I'm going to describe this Turing machine pseudocode for how we can approach this problem. And this pseudocode that you're going to see is roughly the level of granularity that we would hope for while you're describing Turing machines uh, on, on homework assignments and that sort of thing. Okay, so basically what's going to happen is the Turing machine is going to start out always at that start of tape symbol, the first uh, location on our, on our tape. And the way our Turing machine is going to behave is it's going to sort of move right one one tape location at a time until it finds a zero. And then it's going to overwrite that zero to sort of mark it as, as having been processed. And then it's going to go back to the beginning of the tape. Once it gets back to the beginning of the tape, it's going to look for a one. And as soon as it finds a one, it's going to cross that off and then go back to the beginning of the tape. And then it's going to repeat. It's going to find a zero, mark it off, go to the beginning, find a one, mark it off, go to the beginning, and repeat this over and over and over again until eventually it's not going to find any more zeros or it's not going to find any more ones. If it runs out of zeros, it's going to go back to the beginning of the tape and look for a one. If it finds a one, we return one. If it, fi if it doesn't find a one, then that meant that there were at least as many zeros as there were ones. And so we're going to uh, return zero in that case. We're going to reject the string. And if at any point we got into a situation where we had uh, a zero but we're unable to cross off a one, there are no more ones left to cross off, then in that case we reject as well. All right, so let's let's walk through this pseudocode one step at a time to watch the Turing machine uh, behave in this way. So we start with the Turing machine at the start of the tape, and what we're going to do in step one is we're going to uh, move, right, move right step by step looking for a zero. So we're, this is not a zero, we're going to move right. Now we have a zero, so we're good. We're going to go to the next step, which says we found a zero. Now we're going to mark it off. So we're going to, the Turing machine is going to overwrite that zero with like a marked zero or something like that. And then it's going to return to the beginning. Then after that, it's going to move right looking for a one. So move right, is this a one? No. So let's move right again. Is this a one? Yes, this is a one. So let's mark it off and then go to the beginning. So now we're at the beginning, we're gonna move right until we find a zero. So is this a zero? No, is this a zero? No, is this a zero? No, no. Okay, now we have a zero, so let's mark it off and then go back to the beginning. So mark off, go back to the beginning and now find a one. So the Turing machine is gonna go step by step looking for a one. Now we found a one, so we're gonna mark that off, go back to the beginning. And then after this, we're gonna to move to the right looking for a zero. So let's move to the right, to the right, to the right, to the right, to the right. And now we have a blank. So we're going to look for a zero. Once we hit a blank, that meant that there were no more zeros on the tape. So once we see that there are no more zeros, we're going to go all the way back to the beginning and say, all right, can we find a one? So is there a one? Is there a one? Is there a one? Is there a one? Here is a one. So now we accept. So we return true for this input. So now that we've seen sort of the behavior of the Turing machine, let's actually figure out how to uh, design the Turing machine sort of explicitly. So we're going to see what the states look like, what the transitions look like in our finite state controller for this Turing machine for this majority language. So we're going to take this pseudocode and actually turn it into states and transitions. So just like with our NFAs and DFAs, 
Uh, we're always going to have some sort of state in our finite state controller for a Turing machine that we identify as the start state. So here's our start state. This is where we begin. And now let's look at our pseudocode. So our pseudocode step one said we're going to be starting from the beginning of the tape and we're going to um, move right while looking for a zero. So, so we... We know that we're starting at the beginning of the tape, so maybe what we'll do is we'll say, if we see a beginning of tape character, then let's not change it so we know where the beginning of the tape is, but we're gonna move one to the right. So now we're looking at our input. And then now that we're looking at our input, our first step is we're gonna try to find a zero. So this state is going to be the state representing that we're sort of in the process of trying to find a zero. So to find a zero, what we're going to do is we're gonna say over and over and over again, if I see anything that's not a zero, we're just gonna move to the right. So if I see uh, any marked off character, we're gonna use X to represent some character that we've already marked off. So whenever we see a marked off character, we're not going to change it. That is, we're going to, if we read an X, we're going to write an X, and then we're just going to move to the right. If I see a one, then I'm not going to change it, and I'm going to move to the right. So each of these transitions that we see here, the first uh, it has a, is labeled with a triple, and the first thing in the triple is what character we're reading from the tape at the current position. The next character on this transition is what we're going to write at that location, location to the tape. And then the third character is what direction we're going to move on the tape. So we're gonna say R is for move to the right, L is going to be for move to the left, and S is going to be to stay in the same position. So this is saying if I read a start of tape symbol, write it to the same symbol, which is which means not change it, and then move to the right. If I see an X, don't change it, move to the right. If I see a 1, don't change it, move to the right. And now, once I have found a 0, then I'm going to be going to the next step in our pseudocode. So once we found a 0, we're going to mark it off. So if I see a zero, I want to change the character on the tape to be an X, so we've marked off that zero, then I'm just gonna stay in the same position here. And I'm gonna to transition to this new state that represents that I have now finally found a zero. So I'm in this state representing that I have found a zero. And now once I have found a zero, I need to go to the beginning. So I'm gonna have this other state over here that represents uh, going to the start of the tape. So I wanna go find that triangle. So once I have found my zero, then maybe I'll say, I'll be looking at a marked off character. I don't wanna change it. I'm gonna stay in the same place, but I need to go to this position where now I'm going to start uh, marching left to find the, find the beginning of the tape. So what I'm gonna do here is for any character that's not the start of tape symbol, I want to just go to the left. So I want to say, if I see a zero, don't change it, move left. If I see a one, don't change it, move left. If I see a marked off character, don't change it, move left. So this just says, keep going left until you find, or as long as you're looking at something besides the start of the tape. Now, once I go to the start of the tape, I need to start looking for a one. So once I now have found the start of the tape, I want to start trying to find a one to mark off. Okay, so once I, if, once I see a start of tape symbol, I'm going to uh, not change it, I want to leave that there, and then I'm just gonna move to the right, so I'm looking at the input again, the working part of the tape, rather than the first symbol of the tape. And now I need to start trying to find a one. So I'm gonna do something very similar to what I did while I was finding a zero over here, except I'm gonna be trying to find a one instead. So as long as I'm looking at something that is not a one, I'm going to keep marching to the right. So if I see a zero, then don't change it, but move to the right. If I see something that's marked off, don't change it and move to the right. And then once I find a one, then I'm going to mark it off. I'll stay in the same spot so we can move to the next step of our pseudocode. 
So now we're transitioning to this state that represents that we have found a one. So now that we found a one, we need to go back to the beginning so that we can try to find a zero again. So after we found a one, we need to go to the start of the tape again is our goal here. So after we found a one, we just marked it off so we know we're gonna be looking at a marked off character. Let's not change it. And we're gonna to move to the left so that we can start uh, getting back to the beginning of the tape. So over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say for anything that I look at that is not the start of tape symbol, I'm gonna keep going to the left because I'm trying to get to the beginning of the tape. So if I see a one, don't change it, move left. If I see a marked off character, don't change it, move left. If I see a zero, don't change it, move left. And then after I do that, then I'm going to try to find a zero. So this is this repeated cycle. So you can see this box, we have a loop here. This is this cycle of find a zero, mark it off, go to the beginning. Find a one, mark it off, go to the beginning. Find a zero, mark it off, go to the beginning. Over and over and over again. So this is sort of what's doing the main chunk of the work for this machine. Now there are some cases while we're going through this that we might uh, recognize um, or that we might run out of zeros or we might run out of ones in order to process. So while I'm doing this, like, let's try to find a zero, if I ever come to a blank, then that means that I had run out of zeros to process. So notice here, we, haven't, we don't have any outgoing transitions on a blank from find zero. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add one of these. So if I saw a blank character, then I'm just not gonna change it and uh, not move in the tape. And I'm gonna transition to this state that says like, uh, no more zeros. So this is my no more zeros state. So if I, start, if I was at the beginning of the tape, Sorry, I forgot this transition here. So this should be triangle, triangle, move to the right. Once I see the start of the tape, I need to start trying to find a zero again. Sorry about that. Okay, so when I'm at the beginning of the tape and I'm moving right, if I, if, um, I see a blank before I saw any zeros, that must have meant that I had already marked off all of the zeros. So there's no more zeros left on the tape. Similarly, if while I was trying to find a one, I started from the beginning of the tape, I'm trying to find a one, and I came to a blank before I saw any ones, then, then that means that there were no more ones on the tape. I had marked all of those off, maybe there weren't any to begin with. So I'm gonna do something here. So this is gonna be my no more zero state and also my no more ones state. And so if I see a blank before I see any ones, then let's just not change it. And we are going to stay in the same spot. All right, so here, I have my start state. Here I have the loop of find a zero, mark it off, find a one, mark it off over and over and over again. And if at any point while trying to find a zero, I notice that there weren't any more left on the tape or find a one, I notice there weren't any more left on the tape, then I'm gonna go to this other state over here that's gonna say, all right, I'm out of zeros or I'm out of ones. So at this point we have, we've sort of done the majority of the work. We just need to figure out what to return. So from here, from this state onward, we're just trying to figure out the value that our machine should be returning. So the way that I'm going to figure out what to return is we're going to say, let's go all the way back to the beginning and then check to see if there were any more ones left on the tape. So if there were ones left on the tape after we got to the beginning here, then that must mean that there are more ones than zeros so we can return one. Okay, so we, we know that there's no more ones and zeros. So now what we need to do is we need to have just another uh, go to the start of tape procedure. So once we have no more zeros, we knew we were looking at a blank. So let's just say we have a blank. Let's not change it and move our, uh, our machine to the left on the tape. And then we need to go back to the beginning. So as long as we're looking at anything that's not a start of tape symbol, we're gonna go to the left. So if we see a one, don't change it, go left. If we see a zero, don't change it, go left. If we see something that's been marked off, don't change it, go left. Until eventually I find a start of tape symbol, 
in which case I don't want to change that, but let's move to the right. So now we're looking at the working part of our memory again, rather than that first special location. And now once I've done this, I need to try to find a one. So let's try to find a one. So to find a one, what we're going to do is we're just going to say that as long as I see something that is marked off, let's not change it and go to the right. Now, if while trying to find a one, I do successfully find a one, so I find a one, I'm not going to change it, and then my machine is going to halt. So if during this procedure of trying to find a one, I do indeed find a one on the tape, then that must have meant there are more ones than zeros. So I'm going to halt and go to this now accepting state, which is going to tell us to return a one. So this H says that our machine is going to halt. We're not going to make any more transitions in our machine at all. And we're going to return a one because we are in a final state or an accepting state. However, if while trying to find a one, I found a zero. then that means I knew that uh, there were going to be at least as many zeros as ones. There are going to be more zeros than there were ones in this case, because that must have meant that I, while trying to find a one, I wasn't able to find any ones. So if there are still zeros left on the tape, then there are more zeros than ones. So in this case, I want to reject. So I want to return zero in this situation. So I'm going to transition to this state and halt where this is not an accepting state or a final state, so I return zero. Similarly, if at this point while trying to find a one, I notice only marked off characters. So I, I get to a point, I get to a blank, meaning everything was going to be a marked off character. Then at this point, I knew that there were going to be the same number of zeros as there were ones. So I'm going to halt and return a zero because majority required there to be strictly more ones than there were zeros. A tie does not work here. So we halt and reject or return zero by transitioning to this state. So this is a Turing machine that matches the pseudocode that, that we described and sort of stepped through manually. So this is probably the only time where we're really going to do this exercise. This is, in most situations, not a super worthwhile exercise to do, to go from the pseudocode to this precise actual states and transitions representation of Turing machines. Uh, so typically, for any time that you're being asked to describe a Turing machine, that pseudocode representation is all you need to provide.